Hey guys, my name is Grim, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite build that I love to recommend to new players. And the best thing about it is that it's not really a new player compromise build. It's a very solid, well-rounded build because of the generous stat pool it gives you. And uh, it's very easy to get, which is why I classify it as a beginner build. Not because it's bad, but just because it's really easy to acquire. You don't have to work hard for it. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into what it is. So five-piece shackle breaker. Uh, this is a crafted set. You need Morrowind to get it. Um, but you can have someone else craft it for you. And if you've got a friend or even just talk in zone chat, um, a lot of people are willing to craft this for new players. I like running two-piece heavy. Uh, it doesn't matter really that much which two pieces are heavy as long as it's not the belt and the gloves. The chest gives you the most resistance, so it's most efficient to have a heavy chest, but between that and head, shoulders, pants, and boots, <laughs> knees and toes, doesn't, <laughs> sorry, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, as long as you're running two piece heavy, you're going to benefit from the shadow barrier passive. So it's definitely run two piece heavy and then everything else medium if you're going to run my type of build. I like having uh, four in pen and three well fitted. That's pretty comfortable for me. You can mix that up if you want, but Impen is going to give you a good amount of crit resistance and well fitted is going to reduce the cost of sprinting and dodging, which you do a lot on a build like this. The reason I like Shackle so much is because it gives you a very efficient, well-rounded stat pool. Um, a lot of people don't think that it's as good as it is just because it splits up the lines awkwardly. So if you look at the two item set piece is 124 weapon damage, the three item set piece is 124 spell damage. And people complain to me like, but Grim, we don't use spell damage. It doesn't give you anything. Well, <laughs> that's true, but the, you get two different things, two different uh, stats for the four piece. So you get 124 magic recovery and 124 stam recovery for the fourth item set piece. So you make up the difference. You can just ignore the spell damage and pretend that your three item set piece is magic recovery and your four item set piece is stam recovery and it's still an awesome build. So um, you don't really lose anything. You're not being inefficient by running this. It's just designed so that both classes, uh, both Magicka and Stamina players can use it equally. Um, it's not really a hybrid build because it doesn't, you know, allow you to run both equally. Um, at least that's what I think, but there really aren't many good hybrid options in the game right now. There are very few efficient hybrid builds, and almost all of them leverage Perennials to buff one stat while wearing a more effective damage set from another, but that's besides the point. The fifth piece that Shackle offers you is 2,000 Magic Recovery and 2,000 Stamina Recovery, and this is really great. Obviously, we use stam a lot. It increases our damage and the amount of abilities that we can cast. And magic is really great because we use a lot of magicka. Between cloak, shade, fear if you're using it, those are all expensive abilities. But um, the, having a large magicka pool will help fuel those. And the other great thing is that when you're wearing shackle, it basically takes care of all of your magicka needs because uh, it will get you about 800 magicka recovery and a stat pool big enough to leverage that small amount of recovery. Normally I like to run more recovery than that, but because we have 14,000 magicka, it doesn't really matter because we can still cloak for days here. And uh, that is because a large stat pool allows for consecutive casts versus consistent casts. So you'll be able to cast it a little bit less during combat but if you just use more stamina abilities and kite while you're fighting, you'll be able to cloak a further distance because you can cast more consecutive abilities. So that is excellent. I really like having this fat magicka pool and you're not you're not being inefficient by having so much magicka. Um, let's see. The next set that I like to use is Spriggans. Spriggans is one of the best damage sets in the game. There are very few things that overtake it and they're all mechanic based or proc based. Um, this is the best flat stat pool that you can get, and the only real disadvantage is that pen doesn't work against shields. But why do I like it so much as a front bar set? It's because it front loads the stamina. So you notice the two and three piece item bonus are max stam, and uh, we have three pieces on the jewelry, so that's available on both bars. 
which means that you get two lines of max stam, and when you bar swap, you don't lose that stam. On a set like Poisonous Serpent, it splits up the stamina, so if you have a Poisonous Serpent front bar sword and you're using a different back bar, you'll lose stam every time you bar swap. Um, well, you'll lose max stam. It doesn't actually consume stamina. It just cuts your stamina by 1,000, which is really annoying. It only really affects you when you're at 100% stam, uh, but still, it's annoying. And so Spriggins does not have that problem because it front loads the stamina. Uh, then on the front bar, you get 126 weapon damage and 3,370 3, pen. It would be nice to have the weapon damage on both bars, obviously, but I'd rather have the stamina than the weapon damage on both bars. And the 3,000 pen, I only really need on the front bar, so I don't mind not having it on the back bar. And that's because all of my high damage abilities are loaded onto the front bar, and I use the back bar more of a as a buff and prep bar. So... What this allows is for you to use a random or set piece bow. Now, I use the master bow because I have it, but like I said, this is a very beginner friendly build, and so you can actually use a variety of different crafted back bar sets. If you don't have the master bow, you could use uh, Seducer to increase your magical recovery. You could use Death Wind uh, to increase your physical resistance, just make you a little bit tougher while you're on that bar. You could uh, use uh, Organum's Scales, which will increase your health recovery. So just give you a little bit more healing while you're on the back bar, help you to recover. Or you could use something like Nocturnal's Favor to give you stam recovery. And those are just crafted sets. So if you have a friend who's a crafter, you could have him craft any of those for you. Um, or you can craft them yourself and you're good to go. Uh, the best in slot bow is going to be the master bow. The caustic arrow set is really, really powerful. And since most people use poison injection anyways, because it's such a great ability um, when poison injection is active on them, which it has a 10 second duration. So for 10 seconds after casting it, you'll do an extra 301 weapon damage against them. And that is pretty significant. That's a very strong buff. And if you combine it with an infused weapon damage enchant, you can get 750 weapon damage for roughly four seconds, which is enough time to pull off your combo. So I really like that. Um, great back bar bow, but it's not necessary. You can totally get kills with this setup having a random back bar bow. And you'll still benefit from that bow because you get the two piece item bonus, which means that you can get extra recovery or extra defense, whatever you feel your build is lacking or whatever you feel like you need to survive and do better, you can put that on your back bar bow and be just fine. I like to run damage poisons if you don't have them. A disease glyph on the front bar is really great. Um, I like Nernhoned Spriggans. We get pen from Spriggans anyway, so we don't need sharpened and Nernhoned will increase our weapon damage, which is really nice because uh, I actually gold out my weapons as most people should. If you're going to gold out anything, gold out your weapons because that's the only place it makes a significant difference. On your armor, it makes like, I don't know, one or two percent difference, but it's pretty negligible. So you can work with just purple. Um, I like having four in pen and three well fitted. That's kind of what I'm comfortable with. I enjoy that number. You don't have to run that, run whatever makes you happy, but I run. Uh, three well fitted for in pen and really think it's a good balance in pen increases your crit resist i get about 2000 crit resist and then well fitted decreases the cost of roll dodging and sprinting which is really valuable on a stand blade because we do that all the time i run a lot of triglyphs when i can let's see i have triglyphs on all the big pieces and then at least one small piece on yeah okay on this build i have less triglyphs just because we have so much magicka it's less necessary so I have um, all three big pieces in one small piece, and it gives you a pretty generous stat pool, a good amount of health and magicka. It's more efficient than stamina glyphs, but keep in mind that because I'm a wood elf, uh, I actually scale stam better. So the more stam I have, the more stam I get because I get a 6% buff to my max stam, and I don't get that to any of the other stats. So uh, because of that, I will put, you know, triglyphs on big pieces and max stam on small pieces just to kind of maximize the amount of stamina that I do have while still being comfortable with my other resource pools. I like running one swift 
uh, one swift is a lot of fun and i highly recommend it you just move more quickly and it helps you get out of the way of things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to escape it's hard to quantify what another 10 percent movement speed does for you but it really makes it easier to kite because just that many less people can keep up with you between major expedition from your bow and swift jewelry you get 40 percent buff to your movement speed and very few people can keep up with that the last thing I want to talk to you about is the monster set that you use. There are a few good options, but there's one that stands out above the rest, and that is going to be Troll King. Troll King is very strong this patch because it allows you to heal a crazy amount of health, and it synergizes really well with Stam Blade, or really just Night Blade in particular because we get a 15% boost to health recovery. So you'll actually end up getting closer to 2000 recovery from this uh, rather than 1500 because of all the multipliers that we do have. And uh, so it's really useful. I think you'll find that this is going to be the most defensive option that you can run. Another good one is blood spawn. Blood spawn will make you tankier. It gives you higher resistances in general. And it also gives you ult gain, which can fuel offensive abilities as well as defensive ones. But what I found when running Blood Spawn is that while it does make you harder to chip down, it makes you a lot tougher, it's much, much harder to recover. With Troll King, your health will kind of bounce up and down a little more often. But when you have low health, Troll King makes it way easier to get back up to 100, whereas Blood Spawn it can be very difficult to recover if you've got multiple people beating on you. So even though it makes you tougher up front, I feel like Troll King is a much, much more survivable, especially this patch where healing is such a big part of the meta, where you have to be able to uh, heal through things that you can't resist using armor or physical resistance. So for that reason, I really do like Troll King quite a bit. The last thing I'm going to talk about is potions. I really like running weapon crit pots whenever possible. They'll give you health and stam, uh, and it just subs out the magicka recovery that it would give you for major savagery, which is really great. That will increase your crit rating from, for me, it's 35% to 45%, uh, and you can definitely feel the difference. You will do a lot more damage in a combo. You have a much higher chance of getting a kill in any given combo. So it, whenever I don't need magicka, I'll use one of these. I do also carry tripods, which give you health, magicka, and stamina. Very great pot. If you're low on resources, you can get all of them back and from there shuffle your way into a more survivable place, either by cloaking or by roll dodging or whatever. Um, or you can use it to fuel another barrage of attacks and keep the pressure up. So I like this as well. Generally, I'll only use them over a crit pot if I need magicka, like I said earlier. I carry Invis Speed Pots as well. They're really great for getting away. Uh, if a Zerg is attacking you, you can hit one of these and you'll have invisibility for much longer than you could normally cloak and you'll have Major Expedition the whole time. Whereas you could only have it in conventional cloak for a little bit because after five seconds from your bow, it's going to wear off. So Speed Pots are really great for that. Um, immovability pots are great too, but I don't find myself using them that much because we have so many great mitigation options as a Nightblade. The immovability is nice, but it only lasts for 10 seconds, and the pot cooldown is closer to 40 seconds, so you get a very small uptime on a move. Um, I'll use it sometimes if I'm fighting a Sork and really don't want to be rune caged and don't want my combo to be interrupted, but these are pretty situational. I don't use them often. I also carry Magicka pots around which, you know, if I'm not pressured and just need to extend the range that I can cloak so that a Zerg doesn't see me, but I'm not in any sort of immediate danger, you can use one of these to essentially double how far you can cloak. And uh, those are the pots I run. I tend to run Doobies, Kamoran Throne. It's probably the best drink right now. There is a gold one that's a lot more expensive. The, uh, the broth that ethereum broth or whatever but that costs so much and it doesn't give you that much more it, it gives you pretty much identical stats but adds health recovery so it's a good food there's no doubt about that it's better it's best in slot but it's not efficient because it costs so much so you can run that if, if you want but dubious works just fine and i haven't had a problem with it 
So I'll keep using this because I have a lot of it, and then I'll try out the new one when I need some. But for a beginner build, just try and get a friend to craft you some, some dubious. Um, again, this is a beginner build not because it is not a good build, but just because it's easy to get. The only thing you need to grind for are Troll King and the Master Bow if you want it, but you don't need the Master Bow um, to run it well. Shackle Breaker is craftable in Morrowind, and Spriggins is a drop set. Uh, let's see, where does Spriggins actually drop? Let me find that really quickly. I think it's Grotwood, but I'm probably wrong. Spriggins drops in... Uh, Bankarai. <laughs> so I was totally wrong. But uh, yeah, it's a drop set. You can buy it in... A market anywhere or buy it from a friend generally speaking because i like to run nern honed I'll, I'll buy a weapon whatever the cheapest trait is and then trait change it to nern honed that's how i normally uh, get nern honed on my weapons just because with this you can't craft it so since it doesn't drop in nern honed the only way is to morph it so I'll just buy whatever the cheapest trait is sharpen isn't going to benefit you too much again because if it already has physical pen so that's the build. Um, I've been running this a lot. I run a lot of builds. For those who don't know me, I tend to try out a new build every week. And this one I have found particularly uh, diverse and good for a large variety of situations, whether you're in solo or in a small group. Um, the stat pool it gives you is really great. The damage is excellent. And uh, with Swift, the survivability is on par with pretty much anything else you could run save an actual defensive set like you know impreg but uh from here we'll move on to some gameplay footage that i have running this build and uh you can try it out for yourself
baby. <laughs> Thank God.